Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Is it any warmer yet? <laughs> or are you just getting used to it? <laughs> okay. Perfect Sunday for fire and brimstone. But you're not going to get it. St. <coughs> Paul, writing the Romans, reminded us that Christ suffered reproach for our sins and did not seek his own advantage. And that becomes a model to us. For Christ sought to please the Heavenly Father first and foremost. And that is the model that we follow. This answers the question, how are we waiting during Advent? How are we waiting both for Christmas and for the second coming, both for the birth of our Lord and for his return. I've, I've said before on occasion that I am somewhat mystified by lectionary writers. And I've explained the lectionary as, as the set of readings that we have every Sunday. And the lectionary writers are the ones who decide what those readings are. And this is one more time that they start in the middle of a paragraph. And so you really don't get the point <laughs> without the first half of the paragraph. So let me read the first couple of verses here. We who are strong ought to put up with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Each of us must please our neighbor for the good purpose of building up the neighbor. For Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. And then our text for today begins. So all of this goes back to this very basic concern in the Roman Church that all Christians, all Christians are to be pleasant to each other. All Christians are meant to live together peacefully. All Christians are meant to be a blessing to the person next to them. Now, how do we know how to be a blessing? St. Paul reminds us in this, this lection this morning, that's why we have Holy Scripture. We learn from Holy Scripture how to be a blessing. But isn't that odd? Holy Scripture becomes the very point that we disagree about what it means to be a Christian. But you know, the simple reading of Holy Scripture, all of it is meant for good for us. The parts we like are the parts that make us feel good, the parts we don't like make us feel humble. And both of those are needed if we're going to be a blessing. When I read Holy Scripture, I have so much to be humble about. It. <laughs> and the danger for some of us is that we focus on the humility and forget the joy that is in Scripture. 
And when that happens, we go into the community, we, we work too hard to make everyone humble. <coughs> Instead of reminding ourselves that our job is also to make everyone happy. St. Paul reminds us that this process of bearing the weaknesses of Christians around us is what is to live in our mind. Now, how do you live with the weaknesses of others? First of all, you deal with your own weakness. But then, with each other, you hold each other in love. I say that partly because in any family and in every congregation there are divisions. And we have trouble holding each other in love. As Christmas comes closer, Christmas time can be a very difficult time in families. So St. Paul is reminding us early. Our goal is to live in love with each other. To bear each other's burdens is an act of compassion. And no, is the best form of love. The reason for this is that What Paul talks about in terms of Gentiles, and it's a little awkward for us to talk about Gentiles because we're the Gentiles. So let's talk about the weak in faith. The goal of all this is to bring the weak of faith closer to Christ. And closer to Christ also means closer to you and I. And in order to do that, we cannot afford to be here than God. We who are strong in the faith. But instead, St. Paul talks about us being weak for the sake of the weak. That we might learn from us. When the weak in faith see a family that's in love, and that love is based in Jesus Christ, they begin to ask themselves, how can I have the same experience? When the weak in faith see a whole congregation that's bound together in love, in compassion, in gentleness with each other, knowing that none of us is perfect. They might ask, how can I have an experience like that? You see, St. Irenaeus said the good God, it's a man that's fully alive. And fully alive means being fully alive to Jesus Christ. And being fully alive to Jesus Christ means being gentle with those who are around us. As I was saying to the children, this is only for the sake of the weak. The side, the flip side, if you will, is that when we are gentle with each other, we ourselves come closer to the heart of God. And the praise of God becomes stronger on our lips. Each of us must please our neighbor 
for the good purpose of building up the nation. And may the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may, with one voice, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.